Hello, everyone. My name is Lufa. I'm from University of California, Irvine. Today, I will talk about the, um, our work, Perflower, which is a novel performance testing framework. So our topic is performance uh, testing. Uh, what is the performance problem, or we call it a performance bug? Um, so performance problems are software defects where simple source code changes can lead to significant performance improvement. Um, those uh, inefficient code regions cannot be optimized away by the compilers. Why? The reason is that usually those problems contain um, semantic information, and those semantic information cannot be understood by the compilers, so the compiler cannot handle it. Uh, performance problems widely exist in software. For example, uh, Firefox developers have fixed more than 50 performance problems per month over the past 10 years. And uh, these problems seem harmless, but actually they can lead to severe problems, uh, such as financial losses, scalability reduction, and uh, many other problems. They are re really annoying. So some researchers already proposed some solutions to solve these problems. Most of the existing works are uh, post-mortem techniques. That means they need the user to provide either an input or an error log uh, to uh, which demonstrates the uh, performance problem. But that means at that time, the performance problems already escape to the production runs. So that the user may suffer from it. That may badly hurt the user experience, which is really, really bad. So someone may ask, may ask uh, why not just directly uh, detect all the problems, problems and solve them in the testing environment? The problem, the problem here is that uh, usually most of the performance problems can only manifest uh, under large workloads. And uh, usually large workloads are not available in the testing environment. So it's really hard to find them in the testing environment. Our goal is to help the developers find and fix the performance problems uh, in the testing environment even without large workloads. So we focus on uh, memory-related performance problems, such as uh, memory leaks, inefficiently used containers, and many other problems. Uh, although we do not directly target on the redundant computations, but many these kind of problems can be manifested as memory inefficiencies. For example, the redundant function cost, it can be manifested as uh, uh, and never use the return values. So this is a uh, uh, data inefficiencies. So that means our technique can also apply many of these kind of problems. To achieve our goal, we propose our solution, uh, PerfBlower, which is a novel performance testing framework. We can use it to detect memory-related performance problems. The general idea is that uh, we amplify the performance problems. So. Um, so even with very small input, the, prob the problem will become much obvious. We detect the performance problems based on the symptoms. So when we detect the data inefficiencies, we will add more uh, inefficient data to the problematic objects. Then the symptoms will become much more obvious, and it is much easier for the user to capture them. Um, and here is the workflow of our framework. First, users specify the symptoms and the counterexamples of performance problems. Uh, for example, uh, for memory, they can specify the, if the object is very still, then this is a symptom. And then our framework will automatically parse our uh, ISL program and then generate the instrumentation code. The instrumentation code will be merged into the Java virtual machine automatically. And the program, which we want to test, will be executed on the modified uh, Java virtual machine. So during the execution, we will monitor the behaviors of the object. And if we detect the symptoms, that means the data inefficiencies, then uh, we will add more uh, inefficient data to the objects, make it much more obvious. 
sometimes symptoms just stay felt well, then disappear. Then we should remove all the inefficient data uh, to this object. Uh, we still use the memory. For example, if we try to detect the memory and uh, we find that during the execution, object O is not used for a long time, then that means object O is a leaking object, uh, uh, very likely. So we add a much uh, uh, inefficient data to this uh, problematic uh, object. And later, after a while, um, the object O is used again, so it is not leaking anymore. We should remove all the penalties we have added to it. After the execution, we will report uh, virtual space overhead, which is the indicator for the performance problem. And also, we will report the problems we have found and um, uh, provide some useful diagnostic information. So I will talk more details in the following slides. There are three major techniques in our framework. First, we use virtual application to pro provide test oracles for the users so they can easily decide whether they should look into the reports generated by our tool. And it can help uh, um, reduce the burdens. And we propose an SL program, uh, language, which is uh, short for instrumentation specification language. Uh, users can use it to describe uh, many memory-related uh, performance problems. And we use mirror chain to store the useful diagnostic information. So when we report the problem, we can also provide some useful uh, debugging information to the users. So they can easily identify the root cause of the problem. Then they can go to, go to there and fix them. First, I will introduce our virtual amplification technique. What is amplification? Amplification means when we detect the symptoms, which means the uh, data inef inefficiencies or memory inefficiencies. Then we add extra penalties to those problematic uh, objects. This may, will make the symptoms become more obvious and uh, it's much easier to um, let the developer capture those invisible performance problems. Uh, but sometimes symptoms stay far well and disappear. Then we should uh, cancel all the penalties we have added to those objects. We call this deamplification. Deamplification can help us uh, eliminate the, uh, the false positives effectively. And we do the amplification and deamplification at the object level. Why? Because we already Performance problems uh, are manifested uh, at the object level. For example, we still use the Marinix. The Marinix is usually uh, um, manifested as leaking objects. And the following question is how to implement the space penalties, how to do the application. The most intuitive way is just to uh, add some uh, physical memory penalties. So, but this is to uh, naive and uh, increase, may increase the, uh, the space overhead a lot and better hurt the performance. So instead of directly adding physical space penalties, we just use a virtual counter to calculate the um, penalty size for each tracked object. So each object has its own associated um, virtual, uh, virtual counter. And uh, we add all the counter together, we get a total penalty size, we call it P. And S is the total size of the live heap. We add P and S together, and we divide the sum by S. Uh, then we call this result virtual space overhead. Um, based on our experimental results, it is a very good indicator for the performance, uh, performance problems. So I will show more details in the evaluation part. Now we know how to help the performance, uh, how to help the developers capture the invisible performance problems uh, in the testing environment. But the next question is how to describe different kind of performance problems. Um, 
So some existing works just use uh, absolute numbers, such as absolute memory usage or execution time to define the performance problems. But this can only apply to specific uh, uh, program, uh, problems. And to solve this problem, we propose instrumentation specification language. For short, we call it ISL. Uh, users can use it to describe uh, many uh, memory-related performance problems, such as memory leaks and so on. It is a very simple event-based language, uh, domain-specific language. And typically, in an ISL program, users need to specify the symptoms and the counter examples of the performance problems. Um, tell our, our system how to check the symptoms. And they also need to specify the uh, corresponding actions when some important events happen. A typical ISL program consists of five components, T object, context, history, partition, and event. So why we need uh, those components, I will uh, introduce the reason here. First, uh, users already are, are already only interested in a small portion of the heap. So they can um, specify which part of the heap should be tracked during the execution using the T object and the context. Because we detect the performance problems based on the symptoms, to check the symptoms, we need some history information. Uh, where and how to store the history information is defined in history and partition. And uh, when and how to check the symptoms and the counter examples is defined in the event. To give you a better idea of ISL, uh, I give an example here. Uh, this example can be used to detect the uh, uh, memory leaks in the Java, uh, general Java programs. So someone may ask uh, why Java programs has memory leaks. Uh, because some useless uh, objects cannot be reclaimed because of uh, uh, necessary references. So we call those uh, useless objects memory leaks. The mem what is the uh, typical symptoms of memory leaks? The leaking objects are very stale. That means uh, it is not uh, read nor written for a very long time. Uh, but if the object is used again, so then that means it's not leaking anymore. This is a counterexample. So here we go. This is the program. Uh, it's reason reasonably simple. Uh, first, um, in the tracking context, so in the context we define the calling context and the object type. Then in T object, T object means tracked object. We associate the tracked object with their corresponding uh, con uh, calling context and object type, and also uh, their corresponding heap partition instance. So um, uh, I will introduce what is heap partition instance later. And to store some history information, we can declare uh, instance field in the metadata field of a uh, tracked object. So in this example, uh, we declare a Boolean field uh, in the metadata field for each uh, tracked object. We use this uh, use flag uh, to record whether the object is used between two consecutive garbage collections. For performance purpose, the instance field cannot be too large. So we, well, if we want to store more information, we can declare an execution window uh, to store the heap update history for each heap, uh, heap partition instance. Um, so in this example, we use a Boolean, Boolean array to store the uh, heap update history for each partition instance. And um, uh, what is the heap partition instance? It's defined in the partition. In this example, R uh, can equal to R means the R means um, we treat each object as a separate heap partition instance. And also, we associate each partition instance with their corresponding uh, execution window. So um, in this example, each object is a heap partition instance. And 
we have uh, an execution window for each object to store the use history. There are two events in this example. The logics in the first event will be executed when the object O is read or written. So because uh, object O is read or written, that means uh, it's used again. So we should set the use flag in the metadata field. Also, because it's used, so um, we should uh, uh, remove all the penalties we have added to it uh, because uh, it's not suspicious anymore. Uh, so we call the amplify on this object O. And in the second uh, event, the logics will be executed when the object O is reached for the first time during the garbage collection. So when the object O is traversed, then we will update the use history um, of this object uh, based on its use flag in the metadata field. And uh, later, we will check the uh, use history of this object. Uh, if we have enough use history and history indicates that the object is very still, then we will uh, amplify this object to make the symptoms more obvious. Um, so this is the whole program. It's reasonably, reasonably simple. We can use it to track the, uh, to detect the memory leaks in the Java programs. Mm, now we know how to describe performance problems and how to amplify them. Um, the last major challenge is how to, uh, what kind of performance, uh, what kind of information we should provide when we detect performance problems. Based on the existing works, a reference path is a very good choice. It's very useful for debugging. Why? Because it reveals both calling context and this structures which contains the problematic objects. But the problem here is it's very difficult to obtain the reference path. Uh, so during the execution, we only have um, uh, the forward information of the object graph. Uh, for example, we know the object has reference to which other objects, uh, but we don't know this object is ref referred by uh, which object. And even in GC uh, garbage collection, we do not have, a, we may only have one level backward information of the gra object graph. Because uh, in practice, many GC implementations use BFS brand for, uh, brand first uh, uh, search to traverse the whole, whole heap. So uh, we may only have one level backward information. To solve this problem, we propose our solution, uh, mirror chain. The so mirror chain means it is a mirror of the reference path. Uh, here from this figure, we can see that object three is the problematic object. And when we uh, finish the execution, we will report this object. We also want to report the reference path which leading, leads to the, this problematic object, which is one to two, two to three, and, but it's very, very difficult to, to get this reference path. So we build a mirror for this uh, main reference path. So the mirror is three, uh, three prime, two prime, one prime. So when we finish the execution, instead of, of uh, go back on the, mirror, uh, on the main reference chain, uh, we just uh, need to go forward uh, in the mirror chain. So it is much easier and more efficient. Then the next question is how to build uh, the mirror chain and how to maintain it because it can change. Um, we propose an algorithm to build it and maintain it. And uh, the details can be found in the paper if you are interested in. So here is the evaluation part. Uh, using our frameworks, we have implemented three amplifiers uh, including a memory ampli a leak amplifier, underutilized uh, container amplifier, and uh, overpopulated container amplifier. Uh, we choose decoupled benchmarks with, as our benchmarks. Totally, we have uh, find uh, 11 performance problems, including eight and no problems and three no problems. This is the virtual space overhead reported by our memory leak amplifier. 
And the x axis is the program name, and the y axis is the value of virtual space overhead. Uh, from this figure, we can see that uh, most of the programs have very small uh, virtual space overhead, but there are three exceptions. And uh, we suspect that um, we may have uh, uh, performance problems, uh, which is uh, memory leaks, uh, in those three programs. So we look into the, uh, the report, and uh, our uh, su uh, suspicions are confirmed. And we indeed find a performance problem here. And with our diagnostic information, we easily identify the root cause of the problems and fix them. After fixing the problems, uh, the virtual space overhead are reduced to the normal range, which is below 10. This is the virtual space overhead reported by our underutilized container amplifier. Um, so the results are similar to the pre previous one. And uh, there are three exceptions. Uh, most uh, uh, of the programs have very small uh, virtual space overhead. And after, after fixing the problems, uh, their virtual space overhead uh, are also reduced uh, to uh, normal range, which is uh, below 10. And here is the virtual space overhead reported by our overpopulated container amplifier. Uh, two, prob uh, two pro programs have large, very large uh, virtual space overhead. And we look into it and confirm they contain uh, problems and after fixing them, they are uh, virtual space overhead are reduced uh, to the normal range. After fixing the problems, we get some performance improvement, and uh, we can see that we can get both space reductions and the time reductions. This is the time overhead uh, caused by our framework, uh, including uh, time overhead and uh, space overhead. And from here, we can see that uh, our overheads are not very large. Um, so it's re reasonably low, uh, especially for testing in the testing environment. To conclude, uh, we propose a framework uh, to detect the memory-related performance problems. And we develop both compiler and runtime support for this framework. We have so successfully amplified three different kind of performance problems, and our experimental results show that um, our tool is very helpful and useful uh, to, uh, for the users to detect the performance problems in the testing environment. And thanks. I'm happy to take questions. So I'm wondering if you have plans to ask um, others at your institution to try to use your tool, because I don't know, it's hard to know how difficult it is to use your DSL, your descriptive language, to describe the memory problem when you yourselves who you know, wrote the language or described the language are actually using it. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so as I, I demonstrated here, so the the program uh, we, which we can use to detect the memory uh, leaks are reasonably simple. So it's, um, it's easy to use, uh, but also they can be very complicated because uh, users may have very special uh, uh, requirement. So they may write very complicated uh, programs. Yeah, sure. Well, in the future work, uh, we may ask uh, some other guys from other institu institutes. Uh, to try our tools and uh, to help us to prove our um, solutions. Thank you. Other questions? 